what's a tessellation? It's a pattern that consists of one or more shapes that repeat themselves over and over without overlapping or leaving space in between. Some of the simplest tessellations are found in floor tiling, in quilt patterns, or in nature. Think about a honeycomb pattern. Artist M.C. Escher was fascinated by the ancient tile work that he saw in Spain and Italy and found a way to merge his imagination with geometry. The prints and drawings he produced with tessellating shapes and images are amazing, even by today's digital graphic standards. A simple tessellation really isn't that difficult to make. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make one and print it using a process I call inkless printmaking. There are many formulas for creating a tessellation. Now, I find that if you begin with a shape that already tiles perfectly, such as a triangle, a square, a rectangle, or an octagon shape, it makes it a little easier. So to start out with, take a pencil and just draw a line on one side here of the rectangle, okay? like that, and then cut it out. This is even easier if you happen to have a digital illustration program that you can draw the line and just move it digitally. But if you cut it out and move it over here to the other side of the triangle, and I'm just going to tape it in, in place for the moment. You can see these two edges are going to tessellate with each other perfectly. So let's do another line that will tessellate vertically. Um, just something like that, perhaps. Doesn't matter if I stay exactly on my lines because it's going to end up being the same on either side, like so. And tape that in place. Okay, so now trace the shape onto a piece of paper. So now that I have my shape, what is it? Well, if you turn it around, and look at it from some different angles, you might be able to see something within the shape. If you don't, start over and make another tile. So here's a tile that I created earlier and made copies of. And after you've done this a few times, you can be more deliberate in designing your shapes, kind of as I've done here with this face. So keep in mind that the image will print in reverse. So take the tile that you created with construction paper and place it on a piece of plastic monoprint plate making material. This is graphics and press monoprint plate. I've traced the outside of the shape with a fine point sharpie and then it's time to cut it out. Now I would go ahead and you, it's very easy to cut with small scissors and this way you're able to get in and get some of those tight curves and details like so. Now to get the lines on the inside that look like the drawing, place the plate over your sketch that you've landed on, your design, and then use a metal scratch tool. This has a very, very sharp edge to it. It's not sharp enough to cut you by any means, but it really shouldn't be used carelessly. Be careful with it. Hold on to the plastic firmly and with this tool, just scratch into the plastic, as you can hear I'm doing. It doesn't have to be very deep. It helps to be able to turn the tool. So if you want to keep an eye on what you're scratching, just take a look at it with some white paper behind. Now I'm finished scratching. So we're going to call this a tile from now on and we're going to go ahead and start printing tiles. Instead of ink, we're going to use water-soluble crayons or pastels. I'm using Caran d'Ache today, Neocolor 2 crayons. It needs to be something waxy that sticks to the plate and is able to be pushed down into the cracks. And it also needs to be responsive to water. So if you have something that you think might work and you'd like to try it, I encourage you to do so, but I would test it first. 
Now I'm going to make this print in multiple layers. So this, this will just be my first layer of color. And you notice I'm kind of pushing the color around and into the cracks with my finger. You could use a piece of cloth or perhaps an old t-shirt piece to do the same thing and not have to use your fingers, but it helps to be able to push the color down into all those etched lines. Now as a final step, I am going to take another color and I'm going to go around the edges of this tile. I found that this is handy to know exactly where the edges are going to be so that when I go to reg register another print on top of it, I can see clearly where I want it to go. Okay, the print needs to be made on wet paper. You can soak and blot the entire sheet, or you can just wet it, as I'm doing with a sponge. You want it wet, but not so wet that the water is going to puddle up and sit on top of the surface. And that's kind of a tricky part, is knowing how much water it's going to take to make the pastel transfer without making it bleed. You might want to practice that a few times before you start making prints. I'm going to place my tile color side down on the paper. And then I'm going to take a hand baron and just apply pressure, making sure that I get all the way out to the edges, all around the print, like so. Okay, it's pushing the crayon down in contact with the wet paper and the water is pulling the color off the tile. So when you pick it up, there you have a print. Now if you had plenty of color on the tile and the paper is still wet, you could move it over and line it up and make a second print. If not, just add a little bit more color. Part of the beauty of these tessellations is that each one is going to look different. Now, the problem is how to keep the paper wet for the next prints. All right, here is a sheet where I have filled it with tessellating tiles. Um, in between colors, but the, the blue scarf, the purple scarf, the pink scarf, I wash the tile off. Now I'm going to print with some darker colors. Now the problem with making a second print is the paper needs to be wet, but if I tried to soak it again, the image that I've already had put placed down here would come off because it's water-soluble crayon. So, I'm going to just take a wide brush and gently, so I'm not really disturbing the color underneath, I'm going to add water to the surface, like so. There again, you don't want it so wet that it's going to puddle on the surface, but it has to be wet enough that it draws the color off. Okay, this is where the transparency comes in real handy. I can look through the plate, I can see where my first print was, and I can line up this image just perfectly with my first print. And pick it up. So I would continue and make second prints probably over this entire sheet. I could change my colors again if I would like to. And let's take a look at what the finished piece, what, might, what it might look like. Okay, there you see. It's, each tessellation is a little bit different than the other. They're all a little bit imperfect, but as a whole, it's really a beautiful piece. Of course, this printmaking process is lovely with the tessellating tiles, but you can also just create monotypes that are beautiful and unique. They're water soluble. Um, you can use just one single color, perhaps printing multiple times. You can layer as I did today with multiple colors. And you can also include watercolor washes with it. Well, there's a lot more to learn at dickblick.com. You can download a PDF of this lesson plan, check out some of these materials, and browse through hundreds of ideas for art education. Thank you very much.